Today we're going to look at calculus in a business context, but I'm also looking at this as I'm teaching calculus AB. So you're not going to get a ton of examples because this is a pretty minor topic on the AP test. Maybe you already know these phrases, marginal cost and marginal revenue. That's really where we see calculus the most. We could also calculate marginal profit, but you should be able to figure that out once we get past marginal cost and marginal revenue. Well, you people are always dropping your phones, and so let's use that. You have a manufacturing plant, and well, you're not great at math, so you've hired some analysts, and they figure it out based on how big your factory is, how many people it takes to run the machinery, how much the machinery costs, electricity, all sorts of things. They figured out this equation. Let's make sure we know what that means. So the input is X. What the heck does that mean? X is the number of iPhone replacement screens created at your factory. And the output is C, that's cost. That makes sense. So that's how much it would cost to make all of those screens. So I grabbed my calculator. The first calculation is easy, and that is C of zero, meaning the cost to produce zero screens. Let's substitute in zero and see what we get. 10,000. Now that seems crazy that you're not gonna do anything and you're gonna spend $10,000, but don't forget you have to pay your employees, you have to keep the electricity going, pay the rent, all sorts of things. Let's put a one in there and see what we get. The cost to produce one iPhone replacement screen is $10,110. So I guess that means it costs you $110 to make one screen. Of course, if you look at this equation, the cost is gonna go down the more screens you have. Because really what's going to happen, this 10,000 here at the end is fixed and is not going to change. So let me show you what I mean. So the cost to create 100 screens in your factory is $12,000. And if you divided that out, you're still not doing very well because your $12,000 total divided by 100 screens means... Well, it costs you $120 for one replacement screen. I don't think anyone's going to buy that. But at least you understand what this thing means. Okay. So I guess really today is a vocabulary lesson. We want to know what marginal cost means. And marginal cost can be thought of as the cost to make the next screen. And that's a rate of change. So really what this is asking, far, find the marginal cost at x equals 100 screens, is how much does it cost, how much more does it cost to make the 100 first screen? And we can do that using calculus. So we are talking about rate of change, which means we need c prime of x. Now, depending where you are in your calculus learning, I'm sure you know that the derivative of 10x is 10 and the derivative of 10,000 is zero, but some of you may not know the derivative of the square root of x. So we're going to do something different. Let's just pretend you have a calculator handy and you just type in c of x into your calculator. Ask your calculator to find the derivative of c at 100. Turns out that's going to be 15. What the heck does that mean? Well, if we did a derivative, we did a rate of change, and that's going to be measured in, let's think about this. Ooh, maybe we need a different notation. Instead of C prime of 100, what could we write instead? We could write DC dx. That might tell us what we're doing. So let's see. At x equals 100, dc over dx is 15 something somethings. 
So what would the DC, the change in cost, be measured in? That would be dollars. And what would the change in X's be measured in? That would be screens. So I said earlier that the marginal cost is the cost to make the next screen. So we could say if you're making 100 screens, it would cost an extra $15 to make the 100 first screen. We'll come back to how that's useful in a moment. But marginal cost, hopefully you have the idea of. Well, what is revenue? Because the marginal part is going to be the same idea. Revenue is how much money you're taking in. And if we're running a business, we definitely want to know that. So hopefully, in general, this makes sense. The revenue function is going to be the number of units sold times a demand or how much people are willing to pay. Uh, maybe we can do a little bit. So like, let's say if we wanted to know the revenue we would make for selling three screens, that would be three screens, the number of units times some demand price. Although those numbers aren't correct. So you asked your business analyst to do some more work and they came up with well, the demand function is 1,000 divided by the square root of the number of screens. And so let's make sure we know what this equation means. The revenue for, we're not going to do zero screens. That's weird. We end up dividing by zero for one screen is $1,000. Now that's a little bit crazy because I suppose that means one crazy person was willing to pay $1,000 per screen. Okay, the revenue function evaluated at four means if we could sell four screens, we would bring in $2,000. So I guess at that point, each screen cost $250, that's a lot. I don't think People are going to buy those, but hey, it's my, my equation. I'm making them up. If you put 100 into the revenue function given, we get 10,000. Now we're getting close. 10,000 divided by 100 is 100. I still don't think people are going to buy a $100 replacement screen, but you never know. I guess you could look at that another way. If there was one replacement screen on Earth, maybe someone would be willing to buy it. If there were four replacement screens everywhere on Earth, maybe people would be willing to pay $250. But as there are more screens, well, people aren't going to pay quite as much. I'm going to erase that. So we're going to look for the marginal revenue at 100 screens. What does that mean? Well, I think you can guess what we're going to do, but I'm worried about what that means. The marginal revenue at 100 screens, that's the same thing as the extra cost. No, it's not cost. The extra revenue made for the 100 first screen. So really what we're looking for, because we're doing a derivative, is the rate of change of this revenue function at 100. So again, I'm going to grab my calculator. I'm, I'm going to do my calculation up here. And I'm going to ask my calculator to do r prime of 100, the derivative of this revenue function evaluated at 100. And I get 50. Well, what does that mean? Well, the output of revenue is going to be measured in dollars. And the input of revenue is going to be measured in screens in this case, not in all cases, of course. So what does this mean? Well, if I'm currently making 100 screens in my factory and I decide tomorrow we'll make 101 screens, 
I will bring in 50 extra dollars of revenue. 50 more dollars is gonna come into my company. All right, so here's why we care, marginal profit. Well, what's marginal profit? It's just the marginal revenue minus the marginal cost. You know what profit is, that's basically the money your company gets to keep. All of the money you bring in minus all of the money you spend. So right now, it looks like we're making 100 screens. Let's review. At 100 screens, if I make a 100 first screen, I'm gonna get an extra $50. At 100 screens, let's see, the increase in cost to run my factory is $15 per that one screen. So that seems like an easy choice. So it's going, I'm gonna pay an extra $15 to make the 100 first screen. And I'm going to bring in an extra $50. So I'm gonna be making 35 extra dollars for that 100 first screen. So yeah, my company should definitely produce and sell more iPhone screens. Although if you do the math, we're still losing quite a bit of money, but I'll let you balance that out if you want.